Welcome everyone. Some of you are seasoned veterans when it comes to the experiential learning project or final project, both of which are requirements for students studying in the Division of Continuing Adult and Professional Studies at Newman University. Although some of you are here and experiencing this for the first time. No matter what the reason or motivation, we're happy that you're here and that you are interested in making sure you are on task with the best practices for constructing the ELP and final project for your academic course. The goal of tonight's brief presentation is to highlight the best practices used by students who are highly successful in completing these unique projects. We'll cover a lot of ground in the next few minutes together. If you have a question, please jot it down and be sure to reach out to your faculty member. So while I may not be the type of person who needs to read the last page of a book before I start, I do like to know what I'm in for as far as a presentation goes, and I'm guessing some of you out there might feel the same. So here's a look at the agenda. We're going to begin with a discussion of how to pick a research topic, moving through where you can search for sources, and why doing an outline is so important. We'll share a reminder about the format for the project, and we'll conclude with some last-minute double-check steps to ensure that you are on the right path. So here you are. You're an adult student studying at Newman University. You're required to do an ELP or a final project. As such, the project's not something that's going to be assigned to you. You're an adult learner after all. There's a lot of things that you would like to research and connect to your academics. So in that heart, you have the freedom to choose your own topic as long as the instructor improves it through the project contract. Keep in mind that the topic should always fit within the context of the course that you are in, but you also have a lot of leeway in making creative connections. So because of this freedom that you have to choose your academic research topic, the topic always begins with you. So before you dive into this topic, I want you to really ask yourself, what are you interested in? You're going to spend a lot of time on this topic. How can you make a difference with your academic research? Is there something that really speaks to you? Perhaps something you would like to change in your community? How can you learn? How can you use your perspective to add to what is already there? And as you complete this research, how are you to challenge others? Are others going to learn something new that they never anticipated through your research? All of these are good questions, and all of these begin with you as the researcher. Okay, so when you have the answers to the questions on the previous slide, then it's time for you to start preparing how you will seek out specific information. The first thing I want you to do is take a deep breath. The next thing I want you to think about is how you can develop keywords and phrases to search with. This all comes from a process called brainstorming, where you literally just start throwing out connected words and ideas related to your topic. Once you have the keywords or phrases identified, you can begin to search for articles, books, etc. And we encourage you to use things like Google and the University Library databases to begin doing so. A step that we highly recommend, and that is especially helpful for visual learners, is a process called charting it out. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at an actual example of charting it out. This is what Dr. Donnelly did in her own individual research. Keeping in mind that it all starts with something that you are interested in. You're going to spend an awful lot of time on this topic over the course of 8 to 15 weeks, depending on which type of course you are enrolled in. So be sure to pick something that you really want to know more about. For example, in this case, the researcher is exploring and interested in exploring retired professional hockey players. She wants to know more about their life after the hockey game. Next, you'll want to develop some keywords and phrases. You want to think about what you literally want to know about the topic. If you have a broad topic identified, start throwing out words related to what you want to know about. 
This is your brainstorming piece. So for example, if the topic was looking at life af after hockey, some key words or phrases related to the brainstorming stage of research and charting it out would include hockey player transition, hockey players post-play careers, hockey players health in retirement. Keep in mind that this process takes some time and many variations and combinations of words and phrases. And here we can see, as you brainstorm words, the example of what do you really want to know about these topics. Turns out that the researcher wanted to identify the transitions, the careers, and the health of retired professional hockey players. So we share this with you as an example. Most importantly, we want to remember remind you to be patient with yourself. It takes time. And if you need help, there are resources available to you through our university library. So, speaking of the university library, let's talk a little bit about your options as you search for sources. The university library has electronic databases, ebooks, and real tangible books that you can use as well. You have the opportunity to talk with our colleagues and staff members in the University Library in person, by phone, and they are truly a fantastic staff that's dedicated to learning about what your academic goals are and how to help you through the research process. Let's take a look at the True University Library page. I want to point out these things to you, namely how you could look for books and films, the options you have for ebooks, and ways that you can explore scholarly and academic articles published in databases and journals. Just go to newman.edu, click on the academic icon, and then you'll see an icon for the University Library. If you're having a hard time finding things immediately, feel free to just start with a general Google search. That is a way that you can find and identify keywords and phrases and then draw them back into how you use specific university library sources to find more information. Okay, so now you have some sources and we'll flash forward to the future of the stages of your academic research. Now what do you do? Let's talk about the annotated bibliography. Lots of people cringe at the thought of the annotated bibliography, but honestly, it can be a really good friend if you let it. In a nutshell, the annotated bibliography is a neat way to get the meat and potatoes of your literature review done. The annotations are simply a few sentences about the source you read that describes what the author's purpose was for writing the article the methods the author used to find the information that they wrote about, and finally, what the author found or concluded about the specific topic. So again, we just want to stress the importance of the annotated bibliography. Remember that your annotated bibliography contains all of the building blocks, the foundation of the literature review portion of your final paper. If you craft the annotations, or mini summaries immediately after you read each article, you'll save yourself a ton of time because you don't have to go back and reread things to do the literature review and the annotated bibliography, both of which are required for your experiential learning and final projects. Remember, the annotations can be woven together to create the literature review that is a huge chunk and truly foundational to your research project. So let's move on to the next stage of your academic research. It's all about creating the outline. Now I know a lot of you are thinking back to perhaps your elementary or high school days where many of us learned outlining but never used it beyond high school, if even then. Well, I can tell you right now, if you are interested in keeping the stress level down in completing this research project, you need to bring those outlining skills back to life. Let's take a look.
All right, let's look at the project format. These are the standard elements of the experiential learning project and the final research project. Your instructor may ask for something additional, but normally no less than what is listed here. So in MLA format, your paper should have section titles beginning with an introduction. This is where you tell your audience, the reader, your faculty member, what you have been doing all these weeks. You explain the topic and why it is important and what you hope to share in your research. The literature review is information that you have crafted in and through your annotated bibliographies and this is how you let the reader know all of what you have read and what other people, other researchers, scholarly, academic, peer-reviewed sources and such have said about your topic of research. The experiential learning section should describe what you did, what gave you the personal first-hand knowledge about the topic, an event, a survey, an interview, whatever it is, this is where you describe the process and what was learned from it. The connection to the Franciscan tradition should be thorough and meaningful. We do not judge you on how you come up with the connections, but that it was done with thoughtful reflection upon the principles that we hold dear in the Franciscan tradition. Lots of people lose steam in the conclusion, but please do not be that person. Be the scholar who uses this area to provide a solution to the problem researched or a suggestion regarding how the topic can be improved. Don't be dramatic. Don't go out like a little weak breeze when you likely came in like a strong wind in the beginning of the project. And don't forget, your work cited and your annotated bibliography will follow. And your faculty members will always require a presentation. You'll do narrated voiceover if it's for an online course or a verbal presentation if you're in an on-campus course. So to support you in how you're going to put together this academic research paper and following the specific format that we just talked about, here are some guidelines, general advice to you as you begin approaching each section. The truth is, the sooner you start, the less anxiety you're likely to feel related to this academic research. Know that nailing a topic down early is a huge boost to the process, so begin thinking about topics really early on in your course. To aid you in this, take a look at the course syllabus and schedule of topics that will be covered in the class. This may help give you a few ideas. Early to midpoint of the course is when you'll continually seek out sources based upon your keywords, phrases, and you'll begin building that annotated bibliography as you move through. Around the midpoint of the course, you should begin to flesh out your outline and conduct your experiential learning activity. The final weeks of the course, you should see that you are heavily involved in the writing, but break it up into the sections that we just talked about to help you manage it and work through. And uh, don't forget that presentation. We've mentioned that before, right? So as you're about to finish the final lap of your academic research race, we encourage you to double check these specific steps. Be sure to check your rubric. Remember that there's a standard for every experiential learning project and final project in the Division of Continuing Adult and Professional Studies. Be sure to proofread. We encourage our students to read their papers out loud. We're pretty serious about that. It helps us to catch any errors that we may be making, run on sentences, simple things that we could easily overlook. Be sure to find an entrusted friend or family member to review your paper. Make sure that your citations that are embedded in your academic research paper and the true blue body of your literature review are also cited in the work cited portion of your research paper. Some final thoughts. Just remember that this project is a course-long journey. It's not a sprint at the end. 
Reach out to your faculty member anytime with questions and remember that good time management is going to be your best friend. There are resources available to you and we encourage you to embrace that you're on your way to continuously improving your skills as a researcher and a scholar at the university. Here are some resources that are available to you and to all of our students at the university. We have the Academic Resource Center located in the Bachman Main Building and the Newman University Library also located in the Bachman Main Building. Thanks for participating in this research tutorial. We wish you all the best as you continue with your studies.